This is one of the deepest man-made shafts in the world. It drops down over two miles below the surface. And it's not just the miners who take the long trip below. Dr. Esther van Heerden of South Africa's Free State University is researching the survival of life deep within the Earth. Her findings and those of the research team are astounding. Before these shafts were excavated, there was nowhere for scientists to search. It's dangerous down here. For every half mile underground, the temperature goes up by 10 to 15 degrees. And there is the constant danger from methane. High levels of this gas would cause an explosion, so it's frequently monitored. Even so, methane is constantly leaking from the rocks. Yet life actually was found here. Groundwater is seeping from the rocks and the surface of the mine wall is covered by a thick film of white and black. This is a mat of various forms of bacteria, species not found on the Earth's surface. Here they do not use oxygen, they are anaerobic. But research shows that many of them still possess the genes for oxygen respiration, useless down here. Perhaps this is evidence that these microorganisms once lived on the surface, only to migrate to these depths perhaps to escape the heat of a total evaporation impact. Initially, we thought that life only existed two feet from um, the surface. We now know that through access through this deep mine subsurface project, that there are organisms as far as three kilometers underground. Had we had access to other deep subsurface environments, surely we, we might, might find traces of organisms there, which might indicate the same pattern as we are seeing here. This deep underground world has been a refuge for life for possibly billions of years. So far as we know, when life first formed on the planet, it lived in the oceans. It spread out, and some life forms clearly moved down into the dark subsurface of the Earth to quietly remain in cracks and in rocks, residing in waters heated by the Earth's inner mantle. If we look at these organisms living in these environments, they have adapted to survive. Their main aim is just to survive and sustain themselves. Surely, as things change, new organisms, all these organisms will change and adapt to make sure that life is sustained on the planet no matter what happens. To survive is life's objective. And sometime after the total evaporation event, life must have once again returned to the surface. Immediately after the impact, the planet would have looked like a fireball. But within only a year, the rock vapor would start to dissipate and temperatures would begin to drop. Because of the Earth's size and gravity, the evaporated water would not escape into space, and within only a thousand years, the water vapor would cool and condense, and then fall back as torrential rain. Once again, the oceans would start to fill. Would 
be as heavy as tropical rain is today, and in only 3,000 years, the oceans would have regained their original depth. The stage was set for life to return from the deep. Uh, there's all, always likely to be some area uh, deep in the subsurface of the Earth uh, where the heat pulse does not reach. It's probably an area that's fairly deep, so the organisms that are living there are high temperature organisms to begin with. Uh, these would be the organisms that survived, and these are probably our ancestors and the ancestors of all the other life on the Earth. Those early ancestors of life on this planet had endured against all odds. They had survived searing heat to once again recolonize the oceans. From deep within the world, from minute cracks and fissures in the bedrock, the underground life returned to the surface. Perhaps one day in the far distant future, life may once again be forced to revisit those depths. How many times this has happened, we perhaps will never know. For the next two billion years, life remained in the oceans of the world, drifting in the waters, taking nutrients, reproducing, and dying and living. The next challenge to life came almost two billion years ago. And if science is correct, it came not with a mighty impact, but slowly and insidiously. For millions of years at a time, the planet was shrouded with a thick covering of ice. Life endured that too, but how? That answer is locked within the history and the science of the only world we know.